In this next video, focusing on aggregate demand, we're going to spend a bit more time looking at consumer spending. So why is consumer spending so important? Well, the simple reason is it's the biggest single component of a country's aggregate demand. And here's some data for the UK. We're looking at aggregate demand in real terms, measured at constant 2016 prices. And you can see that in 2019, Consumer spending was just a shade under £1.4 trillion. This is household spending on goods and services from cars to washing machines to healthcare treatments to holidays, etc. Now, in 2020, during the recession, uh, and this is not the full year data, this is a forecast from the National Institute, consumer spending has fallen dramatically by nearly 15% in just one year. Well, why is consumer spending important? It is because it's a big share of aggregate demand. Look at the figures here for AD or GDP by expenditure at market prices uh, given to us by the formula C plus I plus G plus X minus M. And you can see that it is a big percentage of aggregate demand. GDP is expected to fall by 10 percent in 2020, a really deep recession. Now, if we express consumer spending as a percentage of GDP or aggregate demand, we can see that it was 65% in 2019, in other words, two two quarters, sorry, two thirds of, uh, of um, aggregate demand. Whereas in 2020, the slump in consumer spending is expected to drive that figure down to just over 61%. So what are the main factors influencing the level of consumer spending? Let me take you through some of those factors I think are particularly important and worth stressing in an economics exam. Here are four to start with. First of all, changes in disposable incomes. Uh, disposable income is income after direct taxes and uh, welfare benefits have been taken into account. And real disposable income is disposable income adjusted for inflation. For most economists, it's the level of real disposable income that has the biggest impact day to day, week to week, year to year on consumer spending. Linked strongly to this is the level of and changes in employment and job security. In other words, the rate of unemployment can be a key factor or the number of people in work, both part time and full time, allied to the extent to which they feel secure in their jobs. And one of the key changes in recent times has been the rise of part time employment, often uh, fairly non-contract work, uh, flexible hours, uncertain hours of work. There's a, a lack of job security in many uh, parts of the economy. The third factor is the availability of and cost of credit. So the interest rates on consumer debt, for example, the interest rate on an overdraft or a bank loan, because that affects the, the willingness and the ability to borrow money. Again, linked to that is the cost of servicing a mortgage. For most people who are homeowners, the mortgage, the monthly mortgage payment, is their biggest single outgoing. <clears throat> it could be also be the rent, of course, but the cost of servicing a mortgage. So if the interest rate on a mortgage goes down, that effectively increases people's purchasing power and disposable income and ability to spend. Uh, three other factors. Changes in asset prices are perceived by some economists to have potentially significant effect. Uh, so the value of your property, the amount of equity that you have in your home, for example, equity is the, dis the difference between the market value of your house and uh, the existing mortgage that you have left to pay on it. Do share prices have an effect? If share prices go up, uh, does, that, does that allow more people to spend because of a, a positive wealth effect? These are not certain factors, but there's often a link between the two. Uh, expectations clearly drive spending today. And one of those factors is expectations of future price changes. If there's persistent price deflation in a country, if prices are falling and expected to fall, uh, that could cause some people to delay their, their spending. If they put off a new, a new car or new appliance for six months in the hope that the price will fall further. The final factor I'm going to mention is perhaps the most important, other than incomes, and that is the general state of consumer sentiment. Are they confident, confident about the future? Or are they pessimistic? So-called Keynesian animal spirits. Now, what is consumer confidence? 
Well, consumer confidence is often measured by surveys and they're trying to, we're trying to track and calibrate and get a feel for the expectations of consumers in the year ahead. So what is their own financial position? Will, will it be better or worse? What about uh, the state of the economy? Do they think the economy is going to recover or is it going to be in a difficult spot for the next few months? We ask people about their willingness and ability to make a big purchase, a big ticket item such as a new car or maybe uh, investing in some home improvements. So consumer confidence is really key. And as you can see from this chart, which is an index of confidence, where normal confidence levels have a value of 100, you can see that consumer confidence does ebb and flow. This is the data since 1990. It dropped sharply in 2008 during the global financial crisis, again in 2011, fears of a double dip recession. And of course, more recently in the first and second quarter of 2020, quite a significant drop in consumer confidence as the pandemic, first wave of the pandemic took hold. Many factors affect consumer confidence. Uh, here are four. First of all, people's perceptions, expectations of the level of growth in the economy. So, for example, in 2020, what will be the possible consequences of a second lockdown or uh, perhaps a, a, the ending of the furlough scheme? What's likely to happen to unemployment in the next three to six months? Will there be many, many hundreds of thousands of redundancies? So a lot of people uh, have expectations and fears about the the growth of GDP, the rate of unemployment, can you pay off your debts, and what might be happening to the housing market. Many factors impact on, have an influence on consumer confidence. And these are good factors to talk about in an essay. If you say, for example, in an exam question, that expectations of the future drive behaviour today, both in terms of spending and saving and borrowing money, that is really good high-level analysis. Here are some key uh, terms that you might want to take a screenshot of, perhaps. Uh, base interest rates, consumer confidence, disposable income. You need to know what the FTSE index is and something we'll look at, look at in a couple of videos' time, the savings ratio. All of these things are key terms related to consumer spending. In the next video, we're going to take a particular look at something called the marginal propensity to consume. Okay, thank you.